So it's been a little bit over a month now since I've had the LG G3 mounted onto the wall in my living room. And in that time, I formed some opinions about it. In today's video, I'll be sharing my experience using it as my main TV for both gaming and just watching videos in general. Coming from a non-OLED TV, the difference has definitely been remarkable and the viewing experience in the living room has now taken a big step up. The TV came with a wall mount, but no stands and that's because the G3 OLED TV line are gallery style, meaning they've been designed to be mounted flush onto the wall. The wall mount that comes with the G3 is what will allow you to mount the TV flush to the wall and LG is calling it one wall, which means that the TV and your wall becomes one through a gapless finish. For my setup, I couldn't use the mount since I had a TV outlet installed there already and the TV power cable protrudes out a bit when connected to the outlet, so I wouldn't have been able to get the TV flat to the wall for that gallery style look. I used a third party wall mount which worked pretty well for mounting the TV up there. It's not a perfect mount job but I plan on moving soon so I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. The LG G3 is possibly the thinnest 77 inch TV I've ever used and it helps in creating a modern and a low profile look for any media setup. It's got silver metal on all four sides and the screen is surrounded by a virtually non-existent bezel. On the back side, there are cable management pathways built right into the TV that allow for a flush gallery mount if you decide to go with that. The input output ports are all located on one side of the TV which is great for keeping them all organized. There's four HDMI 2.1a ports for connecting TV boxes, current gen consoles, and pretty much anything else that uses that. I've got my PS5, my Series X, and an Apple 4K TV connected to it currently through a switcher. There's also a LAN port on the back there in case you decide to go for a wired internet connection. For me, I decided to go with Wi-Fi since the TV comes equipped with Wi-Fi 6E. There's also some USB Type A ports on the back and a single optical port in case you decide to go for a wired speaker connection. You can also use an HDMI cable to pass through audio if your speakers allow it. The main highlight of any TV is usually its display technology. This is usually what determines how good the picture quality on the TV is going to be. The G3 uses an OLED panel which is one of the best you can get right now, especially in terms of picture quality. There's other benefits to OLED panels for gaming and other general viewing and you'll see some of them throughout this video. For some perspective, I previously had a non-OLED TV which was great, it had all the bells and the whistles like HDMI 2.1 support and all of that, but it was still absolutely nowhere near how much better the G3's OLED panel has been so far. If you want to understand the difference between LED and OLED panels, you're going to have to do some more research or honestly, just place one right next to the other one. The difference is immense and the reason why is because OLED panels use self-lighting pixels that turn on or off based on what's being shown on screen at the moment. This means perfect blacks when pixels shut off and colors are also super vibrant and rich with insane accuracy. The pixels coming on and off also means power savings with OLEDs versus any other TV technology that I've experienced. As for the G3, it's the first OLED TV that I've used at this size, so I don't have a previous model to compare against, but I do have the 48 inch LG C2 and I've had that OLED TV for over a year now and I used to think that was amazing, well, until I got this. Now, don't get me wrong, the C2 is still a top dog and I still use it a lot, but the G3 is definitely some steps above it. The major difference that I noticed between the G3 and the G2 or any other OLEDs that I've come across in the past is the brightness level. Now, they all use the same OLED panels from LG Display, but the G3 uses MLA panels that enables the OLED display to get up to 70% brighter than the G2 model, which is their last model. That's insane. When using a TV in reality though, I'd say it was more like a 25 to 30% increase in brightness, at least from what I could perceive or tell with my eyes between the G3 and the G2 that I've seen in stores. If you're wondering if the difference is noticeable, it absolutely is. I still found that the G3 was considerably brighter than the G2. Also keep in mind that MLA technology is only available in the 55, 65, and the 77 inch model. So if MLA technology is important to you, then I'd skip out on that 83 inch model. The G3 also uses LG's Brightness Booster Max, which uses a combination of software and algorithms to maximize the brightness created by the MLA panel. Whether it's day or nighttime, from whatever angle you're viewing from, the display always retains that amazing look. The brightness with MLA technology, the color accuracy, and the vibrance of OLEDs combine together to help 
and creating some really incredible visuals. To be honest, you have to see it in person to really understand and appreciate the display on the G3. The G3 comes with the usual LG Magic Remote Control. I mean, it's the same thing that I got with the C2 as well. It's always worked great and I've always thought the ball and mouse feature were pretty cool. But for me, I find that it's got a bulky design, especially in comparison to what I now use on a day-to-day -day basis, the Apple 4K TV remote. I'm glad I'm able to use that to control the TV's power as well, which means I don't always need the TV remote. It's still essential for accessing the TV settings menu to adjust things like brightness, picture, and sound mode, amongst other things. There's different picture modes to choose from for different situations. Filmmaker works great for watching movies, while game optimizer mode is perfect for times when you want to game. Choosing the right settings will make sure that the picture on the screen looks amazing every time. You can also use the personalized picture wizard to help find what's best for your particular situation or just use the advanced settings to fine tune things to your liking. For me, I use the personalized picture wizard to get the best picture settings that I could for my space and I would highly recommend doing so if you want to avoid crazy excesses like too much brightness in some areas. For me, the TV's built-in speakers already sound pretty good for what they are and honestly, I haven't once felt the need to get a sound bar yet. Just like with the picture modes, there's different sound modes to pick from as well based on the content you're watching. AI Sound Pro will help in fine tuning audio for general TV content, while Game Optimizer helps in enhancing audio while you're gaming. The TV also comes equipped with Dolby Atmos built right into it, so it really sounds nice with or without external speakers. Wireless surround sound audio can also be achieved by connecting through Bluetooth to the TV or picking up one of LG's sound bars and using the WOW Orchestra mode for combining TV and soundbar audio for amazing output. The G3 has a bunch of AI features that can all be activated through the settings menu. These settings will help in improving the overall quality of the picture as well as the sound coming from the TV. Make sure to read about what each one does to see how it might affect your viewing experience before turning them on or off. I found that the AI Sound Pro feature is all that I keep turned on, especially since I've got the personalized picture going on for me for the picture mode. The always ready feature is next and this allows the G3 to keep operating even when turned off. It provides wallpaper, voice recognition and mobile device playback. I've noticed the voice recognition of the TV responding a few times when I never activated it and it can be a little annoying sometimes when that happens. So for me, I keep always ready turned off at all times. Other than the five year panel warranty that comes with the TV, the G3 also comes with a lot of care settings to help improve and to prolong the lifespan of the TV and the display. Within the OLED care settings tab, there's different ways that one can take care of the OLED panel and the TV in general. For my setup, I don't use the TV's user interface a lot since I pair it with a TV box. I did notice that it looks a lot cleaner than what I'm used to with the C2 and things are a bit more organized here. The G3 uses WebOS as its operating system which you can quickly jump to by pressing the home button on the remote control. You can scroll vertically to access different tabs and also scroll horizontally through each tab to access different apps and whatnot. If you go ahead and press the input button on the remote, it brings up a horizontal menu that also shows what device is currently connected to the HDMI input. The home hub turns the TV into a smart home hub you can build smart devices around. For me, I already have a smart home hub through the Apple TV 4K, so I never really use this feature. Let's talk about movies and general viewing. I use the G3 for watching videos from YouTube, Disney+, or my Plex Media server whenever I'm in a living room. This is mainly how I entertain myself whenever I'm in the space and the G3 has been a massive improvement to the level of satisfaction I get from watching TV in there. Bypassing the TV's WebOS, I use an Apple TV 4K like I mentioned earlier for watching all of my videos and movies on the G3. One sneaky feature that a lot of people might have missed on the G3 is the QMS VRR which comes with HDMI 2.1a. This feature is a variant of the VRR feature a lot of us have come to know and love on our current gen consoles. What it does is eliminate that short blackout period when a TV switches to a source or a video with a different frame rate. You might have never noticed this, but it happens a lot more than you think. The Apple TV 4K also comes with this feature, hence why it works with the G3. If one of the two connected devices is missing the feature, it won't activate for either one. The TV supports both Dolby Vision and HDR10 for delivering high quality HDR video footage. This works really well with apps like Disney Plus for watching content with these features and the viewing experience is of course taken to the next level. The Apple 4K TV box also supports Dolby Vision so when paired with the G3, the videos it produces are immaculate. 
One of the main reasons I picked up the G3 is to use it with my consoles. I've got it hooked up to my PS5 and my Series X, and it works so well with both of them. It literally has everything needed by a TV to maximize these consoles, and gaming on it has been a treat. There's a game optimizer menu which can only be activated through an HDMI connection to the TV. The menu is broken up into three sections and there's a bunch of game settings tailored towards improving gameplay, game picture, and game sound. You can always keep this deactivated, but when gaming, I find that it's best to activate this to help in maximizing the TV's best gaming features like that high 120 frames per second. The game tab gives you access to options like VRR, ALLM, FreeSync, and a whole lot more. The picture tab gives you the ability to fine tune visuals based on the game that you're currently playing. And finally, the sound tab gives you more control over how the game audio will sound. One more thing I really like about the game optimizer feature is the game dashboard, which lets you quickly check on different things like FPS and more. To pull this off quickly, you need to have the game optimizer enabled. Once that's enabled, all you have to do while gaming is press the settings button on the remote and you have your quick settings dashboard menu. On the Xbox, I've been playing some Assassin's Creed and it's been really great on the TV. Most games from the Creed franchise have always been known to be graphically demanding but also visually appealing on the right display. It looks amazing on the G3 and the 77 inch super colorful display provides a really immersive feeling I just cannot explain. In short, the TV makes the console look even better. Switching over to the PS5, I tried out a few of the games I have on the console and they all looked amazing. Horizon Forbidden West is arguably one of the most visually appealing games ever made to date. On the G3, it almost felt lifelike to play and colors were dramatically rich and vibrant. The game was operating smoothly the entire time with no issues at all. The level of immersion had increased tenfold than when I had non-OLED installed there before. I still haven't finished my first playthrough of God of War Ragnarok, so I've been slowly chipping away at it on the G3. Once again, the game looks absolutely stunning on the TV and now I'm more eager than ever to play and get through the game. The TV makes everything look so much better on it that I always choose to game in performance mode to maximize FPS numbers instead. The Spider-Man franchise is another series I love playing, especially on the TV like this one. It's got a performance mode with ray tracing, which when viewed on the G3 looks absolutely mind blowing. Gameplay at high frame rates on the G3 is buttery smooth and the colors pop so well. Input lag is also pretty much non-existent on the G3 and everything is really responsive. So if you play first person shooters, this is great as well. There's another way to reduce it even further through the game optimizer menu which is just amazing. As you may or may not know, the third game in the Spider-Man franchise is released in October this year. so. I'm really looking forward to playing that on the G3. I'm certain it's going to look ridiculously good on there. Now, the main thing that could stop anyone from picking up a G3 has to be the price. I mean, it's not cheap by any means whatsoever, so making that decision to buy one has to be very well thought out. The G2 is still a ridiculously good alternative to consider, and I'm sure prices on it have dropped already since the release of the G3. The LG C2 or C3 are also great OLED TV alternatives to consider for considerably less price, but if you're looking for one of the best OLED TVs that money can buy right now, then you can just wait until the G3 goes on sale. If you've never used an OLED TV before and you're considering on making that jump with the G3, then you gotta prepare your eyes for a hell of a treat. There's a lot of competition in the OLED TV space right now and you can't really go wrong with a lot of them, but right now the G3 is one of the top dogs and has to be the best TV that I've personally used so far. That's all for now. I'll report back again in a few months or half a year to share how things are going. Peace out. I'll catch you guys in my next one.